I think for many people, we are divorced from our relationship with rivers. Rivers shape the landscape around them, and so they move and they want to move, and we live really close to them, and so there's this tension between people and waterways. How do we engage communities? How do we engage individuals? So that as we're learning about the river, they are also learning about the river and sharing that with their communities. We started this project mostly because we kept hearing that question, what is the health of the Ottawa River? And it's a really hard question to answer. Ottawa River Keeper is an organization that works to protect the Ottawa River watershed. There's a bit of a challenge when it comes to managing the Ottawa River, managing water within the watershed because we're working with multiple jurisdictions. So it's really great that we have a group like Ottawa River Keeper who kind of acts as that go-between to make sure that things are happening correctly on both sides of the border, to bring all of these people together to help come to science-based solutions for issues that are affecting the river. The Ottawa River watershed covers the entire area that drains towards the mouth of the Ottawa River. This is the unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nations. The watershed is more than twice the size of New Brunswick and has about 200 municipalities. The Ottawa River is over 1,200 kilometers long and also acts as an interprovincial boundary. So we are also dealing with both Quebec and Ontario governments and legislation. Monitoring the Ottawa River is, is a challenge because of its size. Our organization doesn't have the capacity to constantly be out on the tributaries and in sort of the further reaches of the watershed to monitor these things. But changes in all of those far reaches can affect the river everywhere else. And so making sure that there are volunteers who live in the area and who can help us with our work, it's all really important to both better understanding the watershed and fostering this sort of great watershed-wide community of stewardship and, and mutual care. So I have a long connection to this area. I'm um, sixth generation, so I care about it. I think the health of the river and the water is really indicative of the health of the environment that we're in. And especially now with the pandemic, we're a lot more in our local environment, so we're really noticing those changes more than, than maybe we used to. Ottawa Riverkeepers Watershed Health Assessment and Monitoring Initiative is a multi-year project that aims to better understand the health of the Ottawa River and its tributaries. We are studying 14 indicators to better understand watershed health that were decided through an extensive consultation process, such as looking at water temperature, ice on and off, flow, dissolved oxygen, mercury, or nutrients such as total phosphorus and chlorophyll A. Others have to do with the flora and fauna present, such as fish richness, benthic invertebrates, invasive species, and algal blooms. And finally, there are those that have to do with how humans are altering the watershed, including changes in land use, riparian connectivity, and combined sewer overflows. Algal blooms are any type of overproduction of algal biomass. So in all of our water bodies, be it freshwater or marine water bodies, you're going to have algae. It's not until conditions are right that promote the formation of these surface blooms that we actually see them occurring. And the types of blooms that we typically observe the most are going to be green algal blooms, as well as those blue-green algae blooms. Blue-green algae blooms are the blooms that we are the most concerned with because they have the potential to produce toxins. Very small quantities of microcystin can result in quite adverse health effects in both humans and animals, and in, in some cases, even death. So we really want to have a better understanding of where these algal blooms are happening, if they're increasing, so that we're able to better manage these situations. In my programs, volunteers have installed sets of tiles on their shorelines or near shorelines on the river. 
they monitor how much algae grows on those tiles. And then they'll scrape off the algae and send it to us where we'll analyze it for its chlorophyll A content. On commence à s'intéresser de plus en plus à la santé du bassin versant de la rivière des Outaouais. Parce que c'est une, une rivière qui est super importante, qui entoure une bonne partie de la communauté. On a plusieurs petites stations d'échantillonnage, après une quarantaine de stations d'échantillonnage sur tout le territoire qui regarde la, le niveau de l'eau, le pH, la température, des trucs comme ça. Ça fait toute partie de cette, cette idée-là d'aller chercher le plus d'informations possible sur la santé de, de nos rivières. Les espèces exotiques envahissantes sont des espèces qui ne sont pas natives de ce territoire. Ils viennent de notre pays et sont introduits souvent par les êtres humains. People are always encouraged to send in reports of the river, things that they have noticed that they'd like us to be aware of. Invasive species are organisms that don't originate in the location where they're found. They're either imported accidentally or on purpose to the ecosystem and without their usual predators or their usual ecosystem dynamics, they're allowed to grow and take over from other organisms and perhaps have serious consequences for the food chain. Nutrients are any chemical compounds, or organic compounds that will feed species within the ecosystem and allow them to increase their biomass. So at Ottawa Riverkeeper, one of the nutrients that we're tracking is total phosphorus. Nutrient dynamics in the river are really important because having too many nutrients can lead to an overgrowth of algae. Having too little nutrients can lead to an undergrowth and, and both of those will throw the ecosystem off balance. Other volunteers are going out to overpasses or roads and collecting water samples from the middle of streams. We then send to a lab for analysis. It's really important to understand like the quality of water in the river. Being part of that makes me feel that I'm doing my part to like help the environment. The Ottawa River watershed is really important to me because I've loved swimming since I was really little and I want to be able to swim in it when I'm older and, and just be able to enjoy it all the time. Monitoring nutrients and, and algal blooms and invasive species in the river is so important because they are so critical to defining how the river functions from a biological perspective. When there's increased competition for resources or when those nutrients are limiting growth, then the effects are not simply felt to the adjacent species or organism that interacts with that change. Every minute difference in the ecosystem will trigger an effect down the food chain, and that will also, because it's a river, affect everything downstream of it too. And so monitoring all these things is great because we can anticipate where changes are happening and how to prevent them so that the rest of the river remains in good health. The Ottawa River watershed is actually quite data poor. We don't have that much long-term and large-scale environmental monitoring data for the Ottawa River. And without this data, we can't really make any judgments on the health of the Ottawa River or solutions to any issues that we're seeing because we don't know what the conditions were before. Through our watershed health assessment and monitoring project, we're looking to gather this information so that we can use it, so that we can make those decisions and push for policy changes based on scientific evidence. We have created an online data portal. So all of the data that we're collecting as part of this project, as well as relevant reports to the Ottawa River watershed, so that there's this one place that people can go and find answers for themselves. We're really trying to highlight the value that data has for decision makers and that you need that data over a long time period. And so when we take a look at that data in 20 years time, we can then start to untangle, are there trends? Are there issues that we can figure out? Multi-year data sets give you a sense to understand what might be changing that you can't capture in one season. 
with climate change being on everyone's mind, I think that having people engage in citizen science and programs like this is one way to really get more people to care about these issues, but also to show the people who make these big decisions that people care, that they're interested in collecting this data, and hey, like this is something that we have to, to work on. La combination de mes expériences en canot comme un enfant et de mes expériences faisant de recherche de l'environnement ensemble, les deux font une combinaison très excitante pour moi pour travailler avec Carl Rivière des Oudaouais. C'est un rêve de, de travailler dans un environnement que j'aime. We're really excited about growing this project and seeing how many more people we can involve as we refine the process. The way to protect the health of the Ottawa River is to have all this data available so we understand what needs to be done to protect it. We have a lot more data to collect and a lot more work to do. This was year one. 